say, so I'm sorry to yell at you. I love you very much. That's what you have to do right now is stay. I should drive around my neighborhood with my door open because uh, I got no other way of getting air in here. So Sammy can't come over here to see me. No, stay. Stay, stay, stay. As you know, if you watched our previous videos, the MR2 had a bit of a cooling issue at the last Rallycross event, and I am guessing that that cooling issue has something to do with the thermostat being stuck closed. So what we got now, we're draining a little coolant, and I'm working back here to um, take off the hose that goes to the thermostat housing. I'm gonna remove that rubber hose uh, as you can't really see it, but it's it's the hose that leads into the housing back here, and then there's two bolts, 10 millimeters, on either side of the housing, uh, somewhere, and I'll take those off, and then I'll have access to the thermostat, and then we can see if it's stuck closed. We got one of those good old moments of truth here. It took me forever to get that thing off of there. Here comes the thermostat. Right now. And, uh, boy, that, if that don't look pretty new. And, uh, I don't know what a stuck closed thermostat looks like. Is it this side that's stuck? I don't know. I mean, it's very stiff. Hmm. You think that way? Is the right um, way to do it? I, I mean, like if you do it the other way, it's gonna try and like. We can definitely see it this way. Yeah. All right, here we go. A boiling water. She's in there. Yep, it looks to be moving, doesn't it? Mm, Maybe not. Yeah. Maybe a little. Mm. We probably don't want to reach into boiling water and grab it. Probably not. I would say some tongs would be the right way to go, but, you know, it's not moving fast if it's moving. Oh, yeah, it's not moving. I mean, it doesn't look like it'd be busted. Or not no, it looks new. brand new, doesn't it? Yeah. I, I may, it may be fairly new, but it looks pretty busted. Yeah, I think, I think we're screwed here. I think this thermostat don't work. All right, so I guess I'll have to head up to the O'Reilly and see if I can get myself a thermostat. Hope they got one. Let's check the housing real quick. Well, looks dirty. But other than that, a little orange, a little green. To be expected when you mix the orange and the green. Uh, I think it's pink coolant that I'm supposed to have. That's what's in the bucket up there. Pretty sure green came out down here, which I need to wash down a little bit. You know, environment and whatnot. I'm gonna just head up to the O'Reilly and get some coolant and some, maybe some flush. Let's buy flush and coolant and a thermostat. All right, the water is freshly done boiling. Both thermostats, old and new. New one has the gasket on it, the old one does not. I'm gonna pour the boiling water in on top of both thermostats and see if they open at all. That is as hot as it gets right there. Now we wait. Who's doing what, why, and where? I mean, you gotta do this in a small enough container, I guess. We're rapidly dropping temp. But the old thermostat is indeed open. And is the new thermostat open? Yes, it is. There is a gap in the O-ring right there. And it is open. So, they both work. Was the old thermostat working properly? Uh, you know, this weekend, I don't really know. So we'll flush the whole system and then we'll put the new one back in and then uh, and then hopefully everything will be working right. God, I hope so. It's back in here because I put the thermostat housing back on it with the new thermostat in it, hooking up all the hoses and then we're gonna flush. So I this is me just putting it back together uh, from whence it came apart. You don't really need to watch that. You saw me pull it apart. 
Just know that there's a new thermostat in there now. Awesome. And we'll catch you back up when we are ready to fill it up with this and some water and flush it out. It's raining outside today, and that means that we are not going to race this weekend because our site will be flooded. So um, this doesn't have to be done this week, but I'm going to keep trudging forward on it anyway. And that way it'll be done whenever it is time to race again. Picked up this blue double flush, put that in and filled up the system with water. I've run it for about 20 minutes. I got it good and hot and I've shut it off again. The temperature gauge would never really go past the middle. My thought was maybe I don't have enough water in the system um, and I need to fill it up a little more or maybe it didn't burp out all of its air. Uh, so I wanted to cool it down, take the cap off, give it a few burpees and fill it up some more with water let it run for a little while longer and see if it starts to overflow. Uh, the good news is I did start to feel heat in the thermostat hose coming off of the thermostat there. So I believe that means that we are receiving cooler water from the front. But for the longest time, this side is hot, this side's cold. So, but now it's warmed up a little bit. So this flush might be doing its job. I don't, I hope so. I uh, let it cool down, I took the cap off, and I filled it up the rest of the way with water, just, just in case I wasn't getting enough pressure in the system. And I got the heater running full blast like the flush says you should, and uh, we'll let it keep doing some work here for a little while. Run it for a while, allow the engine to cool, flush the cooling system thoroughly with water until all cleaner is removed. Close drain and install required amount of antifreeze. But for now, we're waiting for it to get hot again. And it didn't take long, but it's still under the middle. And the fans are not on. So, they, you know, 4AGs, they run cool. It ought to be hot over here, and it should be hot over here. It's neither of those. Popo. Woo woos. So, uh, word of the wise, and here's what I didn't know I've topped off the system now, and topped off, by topped off, I mean in the radiator cap itself and then also in the overflow tank because it, this thing takes 12.8 liters that's almost four gallons that's a lot of coolant now that it's completely topped up i'm gonna let it run for a while the fans are kicking on like they're supposed to whenever coolant is going through and etc so it may have just been low on coolant so that's just something to watch i guess in regular maintenance is make sure that the coolant is full um, but now it's got a new thermostat, so that's good too. And, uh, yeah, a bunch of stuff that I didn't need to do. I'm also flushing the system. Also probably don't need to be doing that. There's a weird noise coming from a fan right now. Let's go hear it. I mean, I'm not going to call it a mystery because it's very clearly the fan rubbing on the shroud. But I don't feel like I heard that whenever they were going full blast when they were unplugged. But now when they're just kicking on and off, uh, it's kind of making that noise. Anyway, we got hot, hot over here. Oh, there it goes. Okay. And we're, we're warm over here, meaning that the coolant is passing through the system. The fan switch is working as it should, kicking on occasionally. The coolant level, or the heat levels right in the middle, right where you want your 4AG to be, a little bit under the middle. The boys who had this car before me, they, they marked a line. Maybe that line is where it's happy. So I'm gonna try to keep it at that line from now on. I remembered I had one of these jobbers. So now we're bleeding down the flush stuff just to make sure that the whole system is full of flush stuff and then it can do its job properly. And then we'll use this again when we fill up the system with ridiculous amounts of cooling. Also, I read and Ryan told me that it likes revs when you're doing this. So we're gonna give it some varied revs. Again, taking a video after I fix something, but that right there was the culprit of the noisy fan. 
See that thing I bent out right there? Uh, yeah, it was pushed in. The thing was rubbing on it. And uh, now it's not. I still hear a rub somewhere, but. Might be a phantom thing. No, that's still rubbing. I don't know how this thing took a ding like it did, but I think it might have bent this fan in now. I don't know what to do about that. Yeah, see, it's busted. It's kind of been rubbed off. It's got a little tail on it, but that'll self-clearance. Next stop is the flush. The flush is in there. We're gonna get it out. I guess we'll just let it cool, pull the plug, open the cap, let it drain, and then, um, and then maybe I could pull the bottom hose. Or no, it's top hose over here. Seems like you might want to do this with the thermostat out of the system to make sure everything gets clean. But I think in this case, I don't want to push things through the radiator. That's what I'm saying. I think I flushed it out and I don't want to push the stuff back into it again. So I think I'm going to pull the hose off in front of the radiator and just let it blow out of there. All right, well, that was quite the fiasco. But uh, washed her all down and everything is fine now. It's flushed itself out. It's been draining here for a good little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and put the... What am I putting in? What do we call this feller? Petcock. I'm going to put that back in to keep it from leaking while we move it. And we got to move it out of the way so I can get the FX in the garage because it is uninsured currently. And uh, these are insured and there's a storm of brewing. So I want to make sure we don't get, I mean, the metal, I don't know if you own an old Corolla or a, you know, MR2, but the, the metal on there, it might as well be a soda can. It'll dent if you touch it. So uh, do not want it to hail on that car. So we'll get that put away. I'm just going to move the MR2 real quick. Um, without any coolant in it, and that'll be fine. I'm letting let it cool down a little bit first, though, uh, after the flushing I just gave it. My okay, current status is I'm trying to fill the coolant, and it doesn't want to be filled. There's about two gallons, well, I'll say a gallon and a half in there right now because, uh, this, is, this won't take until the thermostat opens, I guess. Um, so we're waiting for the thermostat to open, I think, before it will uh, suck the rest down, but I'm gonna keep this full. I bought non-premix, and I have been mixing it with distilled, so I'm gonna keep this sucker filled. Not too much, though, because I don't know exactly how much I'm losing out of there. See how that's just, like, dribbling out and down? I'm not gonna go nuts with it. I'm just gonna put some in. The fans aren't on yet because it's not hot enough yet. Got the heater on wide open. We're only, you know, almost to the midpoint right now. So hopefully the thermostat will open soon. I mean, we're still not sucking any cool in. There's some air bubbles though, that's good. I'll go squeezing all the hoses, I don't care. I don't care at all. I'll squeeze every hose. This one's very cold. Not a thing going on in here. Eventually these fans are gonna turn on. Once it gets to 180. And then you're gonna see some serious shit. I mean, I hope you just see that the cooling goes down. That's what I hope you see. Ooh, I wish I knew what I was doing. Not a lot of bubbles coming out of there. Maybe I've got the capacity all wrong too. That could be. But I thought I read that the capacity was like almost four gallons. 12.8 liters. 3.2 gallons. What are you doing, dog? You waiting for it to get hot, too? Yeah, me too. I mean, three gallons. I have... I've got a half gallon here and a half gallon here. That means I have a gallon. What's the remainder of this? That ought to be three gallons total. Besides what I've spilled... I should have to go into that last bottle, you know, one last premix bottle to make the to make the capacity. We're getting a few bubbles coming out, but not enough. The engine just won't get hot. How does the mid-engine 
car runs so cool. I mean, I guess it's good that it takes a lot to get this motor hot, but at the same time, it's like, oh my God, what's happening? So it is not the thermostat. The thermostat must, must be, probably, who knows, maybe it's bad. But it's supposed to be good, you know? There's definitely bubbles coming out of the, the funnel. So it's not nuclear hot in the engine bay. And that's the thing that keeps me going. Like if, if I couldn't hold my hand down here, I mean, the head's pretty hot, but I don't know. I wish I had an oil tank. That would tell me, wouldn't it? I feel like this is a funnel problem. It came with a whole bunch of adapters and I can't find any of them. So I'm just gonna keep, uh, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. This is dumb. Oh look, she's back up again. And now she goes down. Is that an air bubble? Did we feed it when it wants to eat? I don't know. I don't know if that's the case or not. It's just spraying, cooling everywhere. I'm breathing it in. So the fans did kick on for a second. That's why I took the cap off and decided to put the funnel back in. I'm just guessing at this point, but the thermostat must be open. I don't know how I have... Oh, it seems to be drinking the coolant. It is drinking the coolant. Excellent. Uh, either that or I spilled it that much. No, I think it's drinking. Awesome. <laughs> Force it to get hot, I guess. Fans just turned off. Fans are running. Sam's going for a ride, I guess. He's not gonna like it. You're here now. You got nowhere to go, my friend. All right, let's drive around the neighborhood on the rallycross tire, shall we? It's dipping down towards uh, under the middle. It's headed towards the sea makes sense, doesn't it? Why wouldn't it be cold? Of course, it's it's dead cold. It's the middle of winter. It's a cold motor. Stay, Sam. I'm sorry to yell at you. I love you very much. But that's what you have to do right now, stay. I have to drive around my neighborhood with my door open because uh, I got no other way of getting air in here. So Sammy can't come over here to see me. No, stay. Stay, stay, stay. Because he jumped right out the door. This is probably not a good good place for Sam, if I'm honest. I just want to see this thing get hot. The oil pressure's good, so that's good. I mean, I don't have oil temperature, but oil pressure's like on the money. That means we're not like cooking it and making it way too thin, I guess. I don't know. I often wonder what my neighbors must think of me. Mostly I don't care. I want to be a good neighbor. I don't want to be the bad, bad neighbor. Uh, fun fact. About these Eurocross tires, they don't like to go backwards. And apparently they also don't like to um, be flat. It sounds like they're flat too. I'm turning it off. I'm gonna come back to this in a minute. Come on, Sam. Can't be out here. Too much doggy badness out here. Yeah. There you go. Okay, see ya. <sighs> what the hell? What on earth am I doing wrong here, people? I just tried to burn myself. Why don't we undo this? Let's see if we can't burn ourselves. See, it says caution right there. Because it's hot. Fans are on. Once this opens, we're going to start spraying hot coolant out the right side there. Oh, there it squirted. Okay, we got coolant coming out. That's good, I guess. Ow, it's very hot. It's not boiling though, so. It's about as hot as the water in my house, to be honest with you. That's pretty hot water. I'm consulting with Ryan. He's saying that, you know, if the radiator's clogged, then the capacity will be less. But the radiator bleeds out of the bleed port, so I don't think that's it. 
And then he said, you know, there could be still some left in the lines, but if any's left in the lines, then it's like flush and like regular water. And I don't want that in there anyway. So maybe I should just open up a, uh, the bleeder and let it pee for a while and let it suck in fresh stuff. What do I care? Yeah, that's mixed. Okay. Ooh, for a second there, I thought I was pouring uh, non-mixed down in there. All right, let's go open that bleeder again. Actually, I want to look through these attachments here real quick. I think you're actually supposed to use these things to make a solid seal. There it goes. All right, so now we should have like a fully pressurized system. I'm gonna go let out coolant from the front now because I can and I'm dumb. I'm gonna let it drink like that whole funnel full. So I'm gonna do, we'll let this bleeder just do what it's supposed to do, which is bleed. She's a flowing. There she goes. Right onto the fan wire. That's always good. Now we'll let it drink. It appears to be drinking. It's going down. When it gets close to the end, I'll go close it off. I like this method. This makes me feel good, like bleeding brakes. Like you know they're bled, you know? We don't want to suck in any air, though. No air. God dang it, I let it go again. I'll wash it down before any doggies come by. You may want to walk wide around the driveway. Save the doggies. That's good. I mean, what more can you do? Sure, I have enough. All right, there we go. Pull that out. Get the hose out. Put some of this stuff down. I'll be honest with you, it looks like I might have saved, uh, I don't know, $40 worth of coolant now. Well, um, but that means that the system is probably still only half full of good stuff, and the rest is garbage. So, you know, maybe you just treat it like some of the old timers do their oil, and uh, you just let it leak out. And then you come back and fill it back up again. And I'm just going to let this run, and I'll catch you back up here in a minute. Ryan said down at Bob Heinsohn Racing, what they do is they let them get hot, make sure they're full, then they cool them down. Let them get totally cool, top them up, good to go. So that's what I'm going to do. I know it says it took 3.2 gallons. There's a whole gallon of whatever left in this system. Where is it? Is it just sludge? I don't know. But it's, it's flowing good enough to keep it cool while it's just sitting here on a, what is it, a 74? five-ish degree day, something like that. It feels hotter because I've been standing in the sun forever now. I'll leave the doors open so the fish bowl in there is cleared out when I come back to do some more work. And uh, I've got the hood open to make sure it cools down right. I'm gonna walk away for a while. So the logical question you're asking yourself is, was it all worth it? The flush, the fill, did it work? Or will it just have to be completely redone? Well, I guess you'll have to stay tuned and uh, until then, go out and find your own Apex because it's better late than never.